Since 1964, the Mustang has been a Ford icon, but forget Bullet and the roaring V8s of the past. There's a new Mustang in town, and it's like nothing that has ever had the name before. This is the all-electric Mustang Mach-E. So, how does it drive? What tech does it have built in? Just how easy is it to charge? Maybe not. And is it really a Mustang? So what we have here is actually the premier edition of the Mach-E. I do like this car. I think a lot of people are gonna say, but it doesn't really look like much of a Mustang. It has a little slope over the haunches to give it a little bit more of an aggressive look, but a lot of cars have that. It's more of a compact SUV, really, in that crossover class. Even has front louvers like a sports car here that open and close, depending on your speed and what it needs. Uh, of course, the new grille, there isn't really one because it's an electric vehicle. And it has a lot of the little niceties you see on luxury cars and EVs now. There's not a big door handle, as you'll see. There's like a little wing here. To open the door, you just push a button and then it pops out and you grab the door handle like that. It's a little different. Well, this being an EV, of course, there's no engine in the front. Used it the space to put in what is essentially a cooler space. You can put ice, food, beverages, whatever you want for your tailgate party right in the front here. It's designed to handle that and you can clean it out later, no damage. Odd feature, a little bit different. Usually people put golf clubs or something in here, but if you're gonna party, I guess, great little feature on the Mustang. Gimmicks aside, there's a lot of technology on the Mustang that we like. You're carrying your groceries, I wave my foot under the rear and it'll automatically open up the hatch. But most of the tech here is to make your driving experience more enjoyable and safer. It even helps you park. Hold park button. Okay, this is weird. Park Assist Mode uses radar and ultrasonic sensors to help with perpendicular and parallel parking. <laughs> ah, I missed the lanes. Come on, you can do better than that. Oh, so now it's gonna straighten it out. I mean, it's pretty good. I don't know why it's wiggling like that. Oh, cause he's trying to be, oh! That's kind of interesting. It actually hit, didn't it just hit the curb? It did. Uh, what it is really good for though is if you're in a really tight spot and it, it can help you there, but um, it needs a lot of work still, but you can see at least the general technology principle is there, right? So I'm driving along here. I like using all the adaptive safety systems that I can. I'm in adaptive cruise control right now. I like that, but I've also put the lane keep assist to its maximum level in this car, and I'm just not feeling it. I've let the car drift one side or the other, and it's not pulling me back into the center of the lane, and I feel like that could be better. I know some people don't like that, they find it distracting, but I find it can really save you. If you're distracted and you look away for a minute and you drift over into a lane, it should pull you back, but you can see the car just isn't doing that for me right now. So definitely need some improvement there. Uh, the other is the driving modes. There are three different driving modes and yes you can select different things but I'm used to having a lot more control over some of it. You do have propulsion sound that can go on the car on or off but really there's nothing that's going to make it sound like you have a V8 engine in the front. I mean you're just not going to be able to turn it into Steve McQueen in Bullet. I think given the electronics and the software in the car, there's probably a lot more that you can do and maybe in the future they'll allow you to do that. Um, I should note it that there are available over the air updates. So some of this will change. So if you don't like something, maybe it's gonna change six months from now. Don't get me wrong though, this car is fun to drive. One thing I have really noticed with the EV and especially one that's kind of peppy and zippy like this is how easy it is to go over the speed limit without being aware of it because it's so quiet when you put your foot down to pass somebody or do something like that you're not aware of the fact that you're just zipping 10 or 15 miles an hour faster than you were in an instant and because it's, it's a very quiet interior you can hear this cabin sound it's a very solid quiet cabin you're not going to be aware of what you're doing unless you look down and see, oh, I'm way over the speed limit right now. All-wheel drive car usually comes in rear-wheel drive, but this is an all-wheel drive version. It has two motors, 
front and back to make it all-wheel drive. It also has the extended range battery in it, which means if it was just the rear wheel drive, you'd get up to 300 miles on it. This one being all-wheel drive sucks a little bit more power, so about 270 mile range. In my testing, over several days, hundreds and hundreds of miles of driving, I'm actually averaging about 220 because I'm using the heat and I don't like to get cold and the power and all sorts of other things. So I'm not trying to extend the range very much, but just practically speaking, that's what I've seen. But even with that kind of range on a long road trip, you're still gonna have to stop and recharge to get back home. One issue, people keep asking, can I charge on the road? Can I find a place? Well, we just came across a place where there was no cellular service, no Wi-Fi service, and therefore we couldn't find a charging station in the town we were in because there was simply no way to look it up right there. Uh, fortunately, in the car, Ford already had charging stations in the in-dash system. There was one listed, but again, it missed the closest one to us and is sending us back into Brattleboro to get to a charging station. So remember that communications with these cars, you need a good Wi-Fi connection or cellular connection at least. So there are a lot of different ways to find a charging station. You can use different apps. Ford has their own. This is the Ford Pass app. I found it very reliable in terms of finding stations that were working and then it should give us a list of the nearby chargers that it finds. Even though right now we don't have, again, a cellular connection, it's already apparently downloaded some, so it shows you ones that are nearby. Some of them aren't so close by. And turn everything off. And here we are, we found a station. Ta-da! Hooray! A typical fast charge to take you from say 20 to 80% of full power, takes around 30 minutes. It takes the charger, so it's already ready. It's in the network that Ford uses, so that's great. It's got plenty of cable, so if you had to plug it in, in the back, that would also work. It's got two, that means it's a high-speed charger. It's got the top portion in this that you'll see, so you open that up and plug it in. And if everything's working right, and it is, you see it charging already. In addition to being an all-electric vehicle, the Mustang Mach-E has plenty of tech to make your life easier, even if there is some room for improvement. Just one question remains. So is it a Mustang? Well, not really, but it's a Mustang Mach-E, an all-electric version. Love driving it, a few little faults here and there, but hopefully giving you a good picture of why people are so keen on this new vehicle. For Smart Life, I'm John Quain.